We're going to go ahead now and remove the coil. And there are two screws on the coil. One in the top location and one on the bottom towards the left. And we're going to go ahead and remove these. And take the coil off. As you take your coil off, be careful. On some of the coils, there's little what they call isolator caps. And those isolator caps are two small plastic caps, one that will fit over each of these two nubs. And again, some of the engines have them, and some of them don't. I like to take these screws and place them back in the holes so that we know what screws go where as we're putting it all back together. We're going to go ahead and inspect the coil, make sure that there's no damage to it. From here we're going to go ahead and remove the spark plug and pretty straightforward on removing them. Sometimes they're tight, maybe they're not quite so straightforward today. I'm going to get some leverage on the side of the bench here. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and remove the spark plug. Take a look at your spark plug. A lot of times that will tell, tell a lot of stories. Um, we're going to take a look at this one and it's hard to see but it is a little bit on the dark side. Not loaded up with any any oil so we're, we're doing okay on that. During the rest of the disassembly of the engine we're going to have to keep the the piston from moving up and down inside of the cylinder. So we're going to go ahead and insert a piston stop into the top of the motor. We're going to want to make sure that our motor is in the piston is in the down position so that the piston stop can screw all the way in. Um, you don't have to crank it down in, just basically just turn it in until it stays. Um, go ahead and rotate your flywheel and make sure that it does stop your piston from going up and down. There are other ways to make piston stops or use piston stops. Some people use a piece of rope down inside or whatever. Um, we do highly suggest that if you're going to be building an engine more than once that you invest in a piston stop. Alright, uh, let's go ahead at this point and we're going to remove the clutch from the clutch holder. And basically these are these two bolts right here. We're going to go ahead and remove those. You know, go ahead and turn it until your piston stop catches and that will help you get enough torque to go ahead and take those off. They are a fairly large hex head. I believe they're a 5 millimeter on that. As you take them wa off, watch out because there is going to be a very thin wafer washer on there and you're going to want to make sure that you don't lose those off of either of the bolts. Let's go ahead and remove both bolts. At this point we can go ahead and lift the clutch assembly off. Just like so, it comes off in one piece. And it's going to look just like this. At this point you're also going to want to inspect your clutch for wear. And if it's worn unevenly or shows an excessive amount of wear, you're going to want to go ahead and replace your clutch pads. Inside, as you have taken off your clutch, there are also two washers and you have one washer that, that goes under here and one that goes under here and you want to make sure that you don't lose those. We're going to go ahead and just to keep from losing them we're going to slide them right over the clutch bolts just to uh, keep them in one spot so we know where they are. At this point we're going to go ahead and remove the clutch carrier which is this unit right here and the first portion of this is to go ahead and remove the screw out of the center. We're going to go ahead and use a hand wrench to do this. And they're on there tight. So we're going to go ahead and uh, crank on that a little bit and then go ahead and remove it. Now comes the tricky part is this clutch carrier is pressed on to the crankshaft and you can use a gear puller if you happen to have one that's the proper size or what we like to do at this point is to just find a couple of screws that will fit into these holes and we're going to go ahead and put one screw 
in each side and we're just even going to go ahead and hand screw them in until they touch the back plate. And they should basically just screw right in. Screw them in until they just touch the plate. Like so. And then you're going to go ahead and use your wrench and just give it a small turn. Switch over to the other side. Give it a small turn. And then you're going to hear it pop. And the unit's going to go ahead and come right off. You can see that we basically just use these to push against the plate as we're tightening them up and it pushes it off of the shaft. All right, we're going to go ahead now and remove the flywheel. Um, what you're going to need is a 12 millimeter wrench. Um, it's always best to have a socket and a, a nice size handle. This is all we have available today. It's a, a small handle, but it'll do. Um, what we're going to want to do is to use your fingers and go ahead and rotate the flywheel around until it hits the stop or in other words it's not going to move anymore and then at that point go ahead and loosen up the nut and take off the center nut and it's a flange nut looks just like this go ahead and set that aside we're going to go ahead now and remove the flywheel. Um, we're going to use a flywheel puller. Um, there's many different kinds and styles available uh, out in the market, so go ahead and get yourself one. It is a necessary tool in order to rebuild your engine. Um, basically, there are two screw holes in the flywheel, one here and one here. The two screws that are on the puller, we're going to go ahead and screw those down inside and then the center we're going to tighten down slowly and it's going to pull up on the flywheel and take it off of the crank. I'm going to go ahead and put this on tighten down the screws on each side Make sure the screws are even. Then we're going to tighten down the center post. And then you can use your either a screwdriver or you can use your spark plug wrench that came with your kit. Go ahead and put some torque on it, just a little bit. And then you're going to go ahead and hear a pop. And it's going to go ahead and take the flywheel off, just like this. You want to, at this point, be very, very careful because there is a small woodruff key in here. That's what this is called, a woodruff key. And it's a little half moon shape key that fits into the crank to keep the flywheel from spinning around. So don't lose that. Make sure that you set it aside where it won't get lost. Go ahead and remove the flywheel puller from your flywheel and set your flywheel off to the side.